Hi guys, welcome to Multiverse. Today, we're going to take a look at the controller role using the gadget power. Uh, some of you guys are struggling a bit to, to, tr to try to play as a controller with gadget, and I easily understand. My first main character was the Phantom. The Phantom was using gadget, and holy crap, did I have a hard time trying to, to, to learn how to play as a controller using the gadget power. It, uh, later down the line, I created a Green Lantern character at some point, and that's pretty much how I learned how to play as a controller. Uh, it was much easier for me to play as a controller using the Green Lantern power, or even better yet, a bit later on, I created my, my Magneto character, which was using the mental powers, and it's really with mental powers that I, I truly learned to master the controller role. And nowadays, I can play controller with uh, all the powers, but mental is what allowed me to really learn how to play as a controller, and it was much easier for me to learn to play as a controller with mental for various reasons. But today we're going to take a look at how we can play as a controller using uh, gadgets, uh, and hopefully it should be able to help at least some of you guys. The main way to give power back to the group, uh, it's something that is standard with every controller uh, power, it is the power over time. I made a few videos about that in, in the past, so you could refer yourself to, to those videos. I'm going to show it to you right now. So if you look to the top left of the screen, you see the Bat Knight, you see the health bar, the power bar. And if you cast a, a power, any power uh, as a controller role, it will add a little lightning bolt underneath that. Ignore the little green uh, burst, that's something else. So the, green li the little green, li green lightning bolt means that you're giving power back to your group. And I'm going to try to burn a bit of power to... Eh. Sadly, I'm, I'm gaining power too fast, I can't uh, really show you. But basically, the, the green lightning bolt is showing that you're giving power to the, the rest of the group. And now it's gone, so you have to cast it again. Ideally, as a controller, you want to keep that going at all times. Uh, after a while, you, you get the hang of it, and you, you, you pretty much know when to cast the next power before the lightning bolt disappears. But worst comes to worst, keep an eye out on the, to the top left corner of the screen, and when you see that the green lightning bolt is no longer there, just cast a power, any power. It can be your, your group power heal, it can be any, any power. But uh, I roughly, once when you, you're, you're fighting uh, in a battle, odds are you're going to cast uh, various powers at various times. So the little, the little lightning bolt should take care of itself automatically. But again, if, if at some point you realize that, oops, uh, the green lightning bolt is gone, just cast a power and it'll, it'll come back. And ideally, as a controller, you want to keep that all the time. So normally, if you're using powers, it should come back automatically. But it could happen that if for some reason you're playing a controller that uses uh, his weapon a lot, well then the, the, there's nothing, when you use your weapon, there's nothing that brings back the green lightning bolt. So the, the green, green lightning bolt will go, and if you keep it only attacking with, let's say, your weapons, the green lightning bolt will not be there to help out, uh, not just yourself, but the rest of your group. So again, you see the green li lightning bolt disappear, you cast a power, any power, and that is standard with all controllers. So all controllers need to keep that little green, li green lightning bolt going, and all controllers have uh, will, will have the green lightning bolt as soon as they cast any power they have. It didn't used to work like that, but with Game Update 73, they made a change so that as soon as a controller uses pow any powers, the green lightning bolt appears. Uh, let's take a quick look at how I assigned the skill point on my character. I don't think he has that many, but uh, it would be a good idea to take a look anyways. So if we look at the weapon, obviously this character is using martial arts. So I have points and all the martial arts uh, attack and abilities. Uh, the other place where I, I placed um, uh, skill points was in acrobatics, rocket assisted glide, uh, forward flip attack, back flick ap attack and launching roll. It's only something that I'm using uh, just for fun. But ideally just use a forward flip attack and then it should allow you to purchase the, the various uh, resistance. You don't have to purchase them, but I uh, would strongly suggest you, you do so. And then if you want to, there's iconic powers you can give to your character. In this case, I gave him uh, the Batarang multi-shot because it is the Batman, but you, you don't have to give them uh, iconic powers. 
Uh, for the stats, again, I would strongly suggest go for the. Uh, you, you can choose one focus. There's a focus with an expert, hybrid, and super powered. I would strongly suggest go for super powered. The reason for that is quite simple. Uh, it's because it gives you 25% power re regeneration. It also gives you 10% uh, power and 10% might, but just a 25% power reg power regeneration that alone makes that focus worth it. And then, uh, as a controller, you want to to be able to give out as much power as you as you can. So you're going to put your points into critical power chances. You can put 20 points in there. Then you're going to put 10 points into critical power magnitude. So basically, cr critical power chances means that you have more chances to, to have a critical when you give out power. And the magnitude is that when, when you do have a critical when you give out power, you will give 20% extra power. And of course, vitalization. Uh, there is a cleavage in the community right now. There are some people who much prefer to give might and power to their character. Basically, I'm an old school. I'm, I'm an old school controller, uh, so I, I I still suggest people put your points in vitalization. So what it does is gi it gives you extra vitalization. The more vitalization you have, the more your power over time will give power to the group. The more your group power heal will give power to the group. So and so I would strongly suggest put your points in vitalization. But again. You could easily try both. Uh, try putting your points in vitalization, see if you like that, and then try putting your points in power and see if you like that. But again, this is what I suggest, but you can do whatever you want. So let's take a quick look at the loadout that we're going to be using. So here we can see the, the first ability that you really need to do to have, and that's, the, that's true for all the controller powers, is the group power heal. In this case, the group power heal is defibrillator. Every controller power has a group power heal. And again, I would strongly, strongly suggest that you use the group power heal, because the main, the main uh, function of the controller is to give out powers. I know a lot of people don't like uh, to hear that, because they, 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 they'll complain that the controllers are, are only batteries, but your first duty is to give power to the group and make sure that the group doesn't run out of power. Your second duty would be to use debuffs on enemy to weaken enemies. And then you could try to do something else like do damage. Or ideally if you could use uh, abilities that would help you to, uh, to raise fallen comrades or to shield, uh, protect uh, fallen comrades. So again, the group power heal. Any controller should have that in their loadout, but I, I know that sometimes people don't want to have that because they don't want to act as a battery, as they say. Uh, the, one of the debuffs that I use in this loadout is paralyzing darts. Uh, the reason why I'm using, uh, there's also, uh, I think it's, okay. There's also a sticky bomb that would uh, do the same thing, but sticky bomb uh, kind of crowd controls one target as opposed to paralyzing darts. Paralyzing darts will not only crowd control your target, but uh, it will create some sort of, uh, of smoke effects around your target that could crowd control a handful of enemies at the same time. So basically, the reason why I'm using, why I'm using paralyzing darts is because we, first it reduces the target's damage output, but also it, would, it, it acts a bit as a crowd control ability against a handful of enemies. And also, there are people who seem to think that sometimes you'll have uh, crowd control abilities that will affect a whole bunch of enemies, but the ability to, to debuff an enemy, that's a single target thing. So, for, exa for example, if I cast Paralyzing Dart on an enemy, even if I crowd control 25 enemies, only the enemy that I'm really targeting will, will have the, its damage output reduced. Uh, there are people who sometimes complain that uh, they have a hard time trying to debuff like a half a dozen ads, you shouldn't be debuffing ads. Uh, as a rule of thumb, ads should should fall down fast enough that you don't need to debuff them. Often, by the time you're done debuffing one ad, most of them will be down anyway. So it'll, it's pretty much a waste of your of your debuff, unless you want to use that debuff as a crowd control to be able to crowd control a handful of ads. Then fine, but if you're using the debuff and uh, if you're trying to debuff every single ad, you're you're pretty much wasting your time, and more importantly, you're wasting power. So you don't 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 do that. 
Ideally, you want to save your debuffs for bosses. Again, there are exceptions to that, like in, in the case of Paralyzing Darts. As I told you, it acts as a debuff, but it also acts as a bit of crowd control. So if you, need, if you need to use it as a crowd control against a bunch of ads, go ahead. But don't try to debuff all the ads. Y you're wasting your time. Uh, the supercharge I go with is a battle drone. The reason is pretty simple. The first reason is that it, it, it acts as a group power heal. So your little drone will automatically assist, it will assist you in combat, so it will attack uh, the evil enemies, but also it will revitalize your group and it will, it will restore power over time. So it's your, it's your supercharge that will allow you to give power to the group if you need to. So if for some reason your power over time is not enough and your, your defibrillator is not enough to be able to give power back to the group in certain situations, then you summon your little drone and your little drone will help you give power to the group. Also, it will shield a certain allies sometimes, protecting them from damage. So it, it does, the battle drone does, uh, does many things. Because the other supercharge you have uh, with gadget, there's asphy asphyxi asphyxiation gas, which acts as a, a damage and also a bit of crowd control. Uh, you don't really need that. Uh, there's the Buster Bunker, which pretty much act, uh, does damage. You don't really need that. Uh, there's an aesthetic, which is kind of useful, but sadly, all it does is heal, heal yourself and allows you to regenerate, which sadly in a group, uh, not the most helpful thing, thing. So I would strongly suggest use Battle Drone as your supercharge and it, it will help you give power to the rest of the group. Uh, one ability that I like to use is Stealth. The reason for that is that it gives you access to more abilities. If you look, right now we're in the, with the controller loadout, there's the damage loadout if we were if, if we were to switch to DPS with this, uh, this, this armory. But there's also a stealth loadout because we have a stealth ability with this character. Uh, if you saw my, my quantum video on controller, you'll notice that the quantum power doesn't have any stealth ability. So I only showed you one loadout. But here, we, we could have a second loadout if we really want to. Ideally, uh, this loadout is useful for the anesthetic. If for some reason I need some extra health, uh, maybe the healer is down, or maybe I'm too far away from the healer. I could I could go into stealth and use the anesthetic ability. Uh, I could go into stealth and put termite mines in certain places before the battle starts in preparation for the battle. And I could pull enemies. If I need for some reason to pull an enemy, again, I could switch to stealth, pull the enemy, and then I would be back into into battle. Uh, there's also, I in this case, I've used, I've ha I left a cryo foam and paralyzing darts to this loadout. Uh, but sadly, uh, when you're in, in stealth, you're, you're like, technically Cryofoam would be a debuff that would reduce the target's ability to heal. But in stealth mode, the debuffs do not work. And the next ability, uh, I, will, I, will, um, I will switch to another base in a minute, and I'll try to, I will try to show you a bit how to use stealth with your controller. Uh, there's the distract ability that acts as a shield, and also it acts as an ability that that uh, that is called detaunt. Basically, enemies are detaunted and are compelled to seek other targets. What that means is that once you you use distract, first the distract prevents damage to your character, but second, it also means that enemies that are attacking you will try to find another target to attack. It doesn't always work for some reason, but mo it works more often than not. But for that, you have to you have to have other other targets, other uh, enemies, uh, other allies with you. Uh, I remember when I when I first was playing as a controller, or when I, when I was first playing with my phantom character, and I tried to use abilities like distract. I didn't quite understand why it didn't really seem to work all that well. But one of the reasons why I, I didn't see the value in distract is that very often I was playing solo, and and when you play solo, distract just pretty much protects you from that from uh, damage. But in order to be able to, to benefit from the, 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 the taunted ability and have the, the enemies seek other targets, well, you need to have other targets. So you need to have either a, a backup, uh, a sidekick, or you need to be in a group with other players. And what that will allow you to do is that if there's a fallen player, uh, if you try to raise a fallen player and you get, you get attacked, you get, you, you get hit with an attack, it will interrupt you from, from raising the fallen player. The same if you try to activate a console or various other stuff like that. If you try to interact with something, if you get hit with damage, you will get interrupted. So ideally, you want to use the distract first to prevent the damage. So even if you get hit, 
uh, the damage will, will be prevented, but you won't be interrupted from, let's say, raising your fallen uh, comrade. And also, the enemies will, odds are, they're going to attack uh, other targets, other, en other players or other, uh, other allies, and it will leave you free to be able to raise your fallen player without being interrupted. There are ways to do it without distract, but ide ideally, if you have distract in your loadout and uh, distract I I is, uh, is available, use it. There's no reason not to use it. And there's the stasis field, which uh, acts as a debuff. It reduces the target's defense. But also, the reason why I'm going with stasis field as opposed to... There is another ability that reduces the target's defense. Uh, I think it's... Oh, there it is. So there's also Gauss Grenade, which reduces the target's defense, and also it stuns the target enemies. But the reason why I go with uh, with Stasis Field instead is that Stasis Field does multiple things. Uh, it does reduce the target's defense, but also it acts as a bit of a crowd control, and also it acts as a supercharge generator. Basically, the more you use Stasis Field, and the more it will recharge your supercharge. So if it recharges your supercharge, it will allow you to use Battle Drone faster, or it will allow you to use the Battle Drone more often uh, during a fight. So not only do you debuff your, your enemy, not only can you crowd control a handful of enemies, but also you will be able to, to recharge your supercharge faster, which will allow you to summon your Battle Drones a little more often than if you didn't have the, the supercharge generator. And also there's some power interaction with uh, Daisy's enemy ma making them vulnerable to Daisy's effect. That just icing on the Sunday. Uh, everything else is why I actually use it. The Daisy's enemy, that's only a bonus if someone else has some, uh, some abilities that interact with that. I know it's a bit, uh, may not be a bit obvious, so we're going to go to another base and I'm going to try to show you against uh, some evil enemies how it actually works. Also, you've noticed that uh, I didn't I didn't show a healing debuff. I will show it to you uh, in a bit later. So let's go. Okay, so here we're going to be able to fight some evil sparring target. So before I do that, let's get rid of those uh, little shields. Okay, I'm going to start by showing you the stealth ability, and then we'll look at the other abilities quickly. So basically, if I go into stealth mode. As you can see, it gives me access to my stealth loadout. Uh, the thing is, as soon as I get hit with damage, I will get out of stealth. And as soon as I use one of my abilities, I will go out of stealth. The exception to that would be the, uh, the, the explosive mine. If I set up a mine, the mine doesn't make me go out of stealth. So I could put as many mines as I want, or as many mines as I, as I have powers to do so. Because as you can see, the mines do take a bit of power, here I'm, I'm out of combat, so I regenerate power very fast. But in combat, I wouldn't use power. I wouldn't uh, regenerate power as, uh, as fast as this. And of course, you can see after a bit, the mines uh, explode on their own, especially here since we're, we're out of combat. So that would be the first uh, use of, uh, uh, of, of stealth. But also, it gives you access, as you can see, to other abilities. Uh, it gives you access to the, the pull ability. And again, the cooldown of stealth goes down pretty fast. And again, you can see we use our, our pull ability. And then you see that the cooldown doesn't last all that long. So after a bit, we should be able to go back into stealth and then use possibly another ability that we have. So again here, the uh, <coughs> normally this would be a, a healing debuff. But uh, since we're, we were in stealth, and when, when you're in stealth, your debuff do not act as debuff. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, we're going to take a look at the debuffs that we have. So you can see the, the paralyzing dart. You also paralyze that little guy over here. So they're both uh, taking a bit of a nap. And also, as you can see, you can see the little red target underneath the uh, sparring target. That means that the sparring target is being uh, debuffed. So basically, the little red target means that the sparring target will do less damage if he attacks your, your, friend, uh, your, your friendly player if he attacks your friends. And the other debuff that we have right now is the defense debuff. So as you can see, it, it there's a little red shield underneath the sparring target. It means that the target was debuffed. 
Let's try again. Uh, let's get rid of those. So as you can see, you have the little red shield under the sparring target. And if you switch target, you can see that even though both targets were affected by the ability, only the target that you were targeting actually gets the debuff. Again, it's not, I, I've seen people sometimes who think it's a bug. It's not a bug, it's, it's the way it works. So if you really want to debuff both enemies, you have to literally target both enemies and use the debuff on both enemies. But again, as I mentioned, you don't want to debuff ads. Uh, debuffing ads is, is a little pointless. You could, you can use it to crowd control a bunch of ads, fine. But don't try to debuff all the ads. You're, you're wasting your time. So you should save your debuffs for uh, for bosses. But again, if your debuff your debuff does other stuff. Like the reason why I'm using uh, this one is because it does act as a crowd control, as you see, and also it recharges my supercharge. So whenever I, I use this, it recharges my supercharge a little bit. Not that much, but uh, it does recharge it a bit faster than, than, than if you didn't use the supercharge generator. And once my supercharge is full, then it would allow me to cast uh, my little battle drone. And also, the, the ability that I mentioned earlier is the ability to give power to your group. So basically, this is the defibrillator. So whenever I use this ability, I give power to the rest of the group. There's a few abilities also that will uh, that works in tandem with uh, defibrillator, but uh, that would be a video for uh, for another day. And uh, of course, the shield. So basically, this is the distract ability. When you see your uh, your character shine a bit like that, it's because he has some sort of immunity. But as you saw, it doesn't last very long. But usually, it lasts long enough for you to be able to interact with uh, with something while enemies are trying to attack you. So, and now we're going to talk about the healing debuff. Uh, basically, there isn't. There's only a handful of enemies in the game that actually regenerate themselves. So you only need the healing debuff against only a handful of enemies. So let's switch armories. So n very, uh, very often with certain controllers, I will have a troll armory and I will, uh, I will have a troll debuff armory. So basically the troll armory, I will have the defense debuff and the attack debuff. But with the debuff armory, I would add the, uh, the healing debuff. Uh, here in this case, I've replaced distract with the healing debuff so let's take a quick look so if we look at our loadout it's the very same loadout as before with one exception so we're still using defibrillator we're still using paralyzing darts we're still using the battle drone we're still using stealth and we're still and instead of using distract we're using napalm grenade so as you can, if you go all the way down, it'll, it'll show you that it reduces target's ability to heal. Also, it knocks down targeted enemies. That's just a bonus. What you really want is the, the ability to reduce target's ability to heal. And of course, it, it enemies uh, catch on fire and are damaged over time. So th and there's some power interaction, like burn enemies, make it burns enemies, and it makes them vulnerable to burning effects. So let's say you were to use a napalm grenade on some enemies, and one of your friends is a fire DPS. Well, you would you would interact with him. And also, encased enemy are detonated. Uh, basically, basically this is encasing the enemies, and this makes them detonate. So again, it pretty much acts in. Uh, and uh, it interacts with uh, with your your defense debuff. So that could be one reason to use it against a bunch of ads. You put the ads in a, an encasement, and then you detonate the encasement. Or if someone else uses encasement, you could get rid of those encasements yourself. And as you can see. There's that little red heart underneath uh, the sparring target. And even though, again, even though both targets got affected, only the one you were targeting actually gets the healing debuff. 
So again, if you want to debuff debuff both enemies, then you have to target both enemies. As you can see, the cooldown for Napalm Grenade is really fast, so you can easily debuff multiple enemies if you really want to, but there's, there's no, no real reason to do that. And again, if you put them in an encasement, it blows the encasement. And if I'm not mistake, mistaken, it should do a bit of extra damage thanks to that. Anyway, but the rest is pretty much the same. Defibrillator, the attack debuff, the defense debuff, but in addition, we add the healing debuff. You can have all debuffs on one target if you really want to, and then you could work to try to maintain it throughout the whole fight, again, if you really want to. So if you really want to, you can debuff, you can have all three debuffs on a target. But again, if the target isn't really healing himself, there's a little point in having the, the healing debuff. Again, the reason to use the healing debuff is not just for the debuff itself, but it's for all the other things that it can actually do. So usually, usually that's what I try to do. I try to use abilities that have multiple purposes so that they you you're never stuck with an ability that is uh, uh, a little useless in certain situations. And the other ability that prevents uh, enemies to heal is the uh, the cryofoam. You could easily use the cryofoam if you really want to. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, personally, I'm using uh, napalm grenade because I like the fact that it can break out encasement. So again, it's it creates a multiple uh, a multiple use abil uh, ab ab ability. So it, it does catch enemy on fire and damage them over time. Uh, it does reduce the ability to heal. It does lock down target enemies. And also, it does burn enemies and make them vulnerable to burning effect. And it encases enemy, uh, encased enemy are detonated. So the, the ability does a whole truckload of things. So that's why I kind of like uh, using it as opposed to the cryofoam ability. Uh, again, the cryofoam ability does a whole bunch of stuff. It does. It has a whole bunch of power interaction. So it, like it burns against en electrified enemies, electrifies enemies, electrified enemies take additional damage, burning enemy takes additional, additional damage, uh, frostbitten enemies freeze and become encased, and burning enemies will not become encased. So it, it also does a whole bunch of stuff, but between the two, Personally, I prefer Napalm Grenade, but you could easily use Cryofoam. There's nothing, uh, nothing against that. And we're going to try to you to uh, recharge our supercharge, and I'll try to shoot uh, the little battle drone uh, so that we can cover everything. So as you can see, the the supercharge generator did help a bit to to recharge our battle drone. So again, if you summon the old drone, here's what's going to happen. So you can see it's a nice little, uh, a nice cute little drone, and it, it will help you as you fight the evil forces of evil. I'm not sure why it's not attacking. Oh, that is strange. Normally, he would have attacked and he would have uh, protected and give, given power and all that good stuff, but I guess we're we're not really in combat against the the dummies, so I guess the the, the drone uh, didn't really want to cooperate. But normally the drone does a better job than it just did. It happens. And again, also there's the, the stealth ability, which gives you access to a, a, a whole new loadout if you really want to. So that's pretty much it for the gadget controller uh, power. So just a quick recap. So the loadout we're using is either defibrillator, paralyzing darts, battle drone, stealth, napalm grenade, and stasis field. You could decide to replace stealth with this track. Uh, it's, uh, it's as you wish. Uh, napalm grenade, again, will give you your healing debuff. And the stasis field will give you your, your defense debuff. And in addition to all the extra stuff that uh, those abilities do, do which uh, I've already mentioned. So again, if you don't like using Distract, you can use Napalm Grenade instead. Or if you don't like using the Stealth ability, then you could put Distract instead of the Stealth ability and use a Napalm Grenade uh, 
instead as well. So you can uh, you can you can tweak it a bit if you if you really want to. So basically, if you struggle a bit with using the gadget controller, then you could try this uh, this loadout as a starting point, or if you prefer, you could try this loadout as a starting point. Or again, if you really want to, you could decide that you don't you don't want to use the stealth ability. So you could decide to use uh, distract is instead as your shield. And you could use all three debuffs if you prefer. So again, personally, I usually have a in some in some cases I have a troll debuff and I have a, a troll uh, just a troll without the healing debuff. But I it's a case by case basis, and also it depends on the power. As you as you remembered, with quantum the healing debuff is part of my loadout by default because for quantum the healing debuff is also the supercharge generator. So I guess that's going to be it for now, guys. So again, uh, hopefully this will help at least some of you. Uh, if you have any questions concerning uh, the loadout, uh, concerning a gadget controller or all that good stuff, ask. Uh, all you need to do is ask in the comment section, section down below, and I'll try to see what I can do about answering uh, your questions. So that's uh, pretty much it for now, guys. So as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.